DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Good evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJN TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and the DJ and TV Insiders. time for Tuesday Night Live Chat with Brian S. Red and John Young. And then I get to be the bad guy. That's what that will be. It's about time. I mean, usually you're the radical one, but I, tonight, you've, you've already just spewed about all the things in the world that were wrong. <laughs> so, gang, you missed the, the best part of the show just happened 10 minutes ago. Sorry. But you missed it. We'll, we'll try. We'll try. We'll try to come back. <laughs> See what that. we can do. Good evening and welcome to tonight's show. Tonight we're going to be talking a few different topics. We're going to kick off talking about the concept of should you add a photo booth to your DJ business? This is a topic that was huge last week because of the Photo Booth Expo. And our own Brian S. Red decided to kick that beehive just a little bit. <laughs> Stir that <laughs> pot, baby. Yo. So we're going to dig into that a little bit tonight and look at a few different aspects of it. Then, uh, once you get done with that, we're going to talk a little bit about the whole um, um, After Neverland thing and the Michael Jackson thing and how that's going to work. Don't comment about that right now. Please leave that alone. That's later. Now, we're going to talk we're photo booths. We're going to talk about it. We will get there. Let's so talk about photo booths first. Today, and Then we'll talk about leaving Neverland. But of, we got to do an order. Exactly, because we got to get good. we got to make it work. All right. So, last week was Photo Booth Expo. Lots of cool gear, lots of cool things. And you did a video basically talking a little bit of yeah. questioning that idea and take me to that conversation you were having with a, a DJ who was looking to add a photo booth kind of bring me up to speed on what that story was about well yeah the, the reason I, I did the video this is a couple of reasons I did it but there was uh, actually it was the after show of the Shucky News Television last week Howie and I uh, I think we did a really good show together and we had a lot of people involved and i think you lost it no 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 you it's actually going show. to be it's going to be uploaded tomorrow um i i couldn't find it it was hidden in a different spot in zoom so it will be going live so you tomorrow. lost it but then you found it right okay so it's, it's a good show i was looking forward to seeing it all week and i'm like where the hell is it well you didn't you didn't and I have, yeah. tomorrow yeah. so anyway yeah. you're gonna see it it's a good show but we had a really good um a post show jam with you know how you do just kind of open forum and we turn the recording off and there was a gentleman who was who was there and i'm not going to call anybody out but he was saying how you know he has a mirror booth mm -hmm. and they're getting fifteen hundred dollars a night for their mirror booth in his market they have two and he is was getting ready to go into a meeting with somebody to pick up two more because they're just making a killing with this mirror booth at nice. fifteen hundred a night yeah I said, well, that's pretty impressive. Um, have you done the numbers on it? He's like, well, we're making money. I'm like, okay. Um, let's do the math. Mm -hmm. So we did the math. All together, and, and without getting into great detail about it, because we have other things to talk about in the show, there was a total of around 15 grand invested in um, the booth itself. With all yeah. the add-ons and the screens and everything else, it was a fifteen thousand dollar investment per booth. Um, we did it on my typical twenty gigs per year plan, just as a number, mm -hmm. uh, because at that at twenty gigs a year, even if you don't do twenty gigs a year, it doesn't matter. All I'm talking about is a five percent rental fee on your investment, which is pretty average, even if you don't do twenty gigs a year. Let's say that you do a five percent rental fee per event. It would come to seven hundred and fifty dollars. That is what you're paying 
just for, you know, to have your booth there. Mm -hmm. it's your expense for your equipment. And then we added media kit, we added assistance, business costs, as far as out of pocket per event. And we also added annual costs running the business and transportation and everything else. And we came to a profit of $192 an event. Wow. And 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 I wasn't trying to to be pessimistic about it. I'm really trying to wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing this as a complete uh, uh, layman. I have a photo booth. And, and we've ran this thing since 2011. And our total investment is roughly 4,400 with everything else, as far okay. as add-ons go. Mm -hmm. And even at that, with a 5%, a uh, uh, cost on that with media kit, personnel, transportation, all of that, it, it, the profit is very small, if profiting at all. So I made the video, okay, mm -hmm. that, that you're talking about. Yep. I was really reaching out. I wasn't a pessimist, cynical, but not with this and the way oh we make money and profit i haven't anybody do the math for me yet because yeah. uh, oh, fresh are we, are we having issues mm. uh, i just had a really good rant that would piss I know. me off I know. of course we recorded it doesn't matter yeah well it's still going on facebook i mean i'm watching us on facebook no. Well, I don't know. Let me see. That's just uh Yeah, we're we're still here. No, I don't know what Jimmy's talking about. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah, seeing yeah, everything YouTube. looks good. Okay, sorry about that for those of you watching. It's just when we have a, have something pop up. Um the the uh the companies that were looking for a silver or or, or that uh that solution last week. There are many of them out there who are looking at that photo booth as the next big thing that's going to help save their business. Which which was kind of interesting, and that uh, and when you were talking about the number side of it, and you were putting those numbers together at rate, and it's like goodness gracious, is that fifteen thousand dollar photo booth was not the most expensive one at Photo Booth Expo. You right, could, I I talked to somebody the other day, John, who told me that they just bought a photo booth. Total cost for this photo booth was over sixteen thousand dollars, almost seventeen thousand dollars. They saw my video and now they're afraid. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not trying to freak people out. I'm only trying to find out what your business plan is. That's all I'm trying to do. I think, and, and, and I think one of the I things, an area where that. the photo booth business plan changes compared to a DJ, is that with a photo booth, there's you've got to have more opportunities to a point than than the DJ. And yes, we have our our investment and expenses and such. But I think in some of the aspects with a photo booth, the life expectancy of is not quite as long as like our EV speakers. We have we buy EV speakers and we're expecting them to be able to last over a five year period. And if we right. don't, if we're not getting our five percent on our twenty shows each year, you know whatever. Whereas a lot of the photo booth things, I don't, I haven't talked to too many people who are using the same one that they bought four years ago. So I, I think things break. I mean, we had to reinvest in a printer last year, I yeah, mean, and that was twelve hundred dollars. Not only that, well, what happened was we had two in a row, and we had one on a Saturday. I, I talked about this in the video, and, and then we had another one the following Saturday, yeah, and on the last session of of uh, you know photos at the first gig, you know, so you know the the printer broke, and that's not the end of the world because they got their four hours out of us or whatever they, mm -hmm. they had us for. Just one session we couldn't provide photos for. However, so we've got. Uh, five business days to ship our printer out, get it repaired if it can be repaired and ship back to us. Yeah, and ain't gonna happen. Yeah, so what we had to do was we had to buy a $1,200 printer and we had to have rush delivery. And even at that, I had to go to UPS on Friday night at 8 30 to pick it up. Good, that was stress, dude. No, for I don't sure. need that in my life, and mm. it was. I had to get a media kit for it. We didn't know how to run it. We didn't. We had to set it up. And I, I'm not savvy with this stuff, but we had to stay up very late to do this, and we were twelve hundred dollars out. So we lost money in those two weeks. Mm -hmm. Really, 
um, you know, you got to make it up later because you got to add that money. So, yeah, dude, I, I, I'm just not seeing. I mean, someone's got to help me out with this, and, and I'm begging people to give me that business plan. I got attacked a lot from mm -hmm. people who had photo booths and are defending their purchases. I got private messages from people who didn't want to go public and were now concerned because of my video. And I wasn't trying to freak anybody out yeah. again, but I still haven't seen that business plan. If somebody can get, even, even Drax chimed in and says, well, you can make money at this. I'm like mm -hmm. how Drax? And, I, I, and, and his response to that was, feel oh, free to call me sometime. I'm like, no, I don't want to call you. Tell me how to make money with this. It shouldn't be that hard. You know? But I, I think the the yeah. the way that you can make money with a photo booth is that first a person has to have an understanding of what your what the potential is in your area you mark the market you serve, and then which type of booth is going to be saleable in your market at that potential level. So we look at that. Mm. Um, let's let's look at the the biggest one. There was that eight foot tall photo photo master mirror. That had a 65 yeah. inch monitor in there, and it was a, this touch screeny thing, and it's just huge, a cool thing, no question about it. Yeah, you know, those are pushing you're, you're now in that and all set up and everything that's pushing close to twenty thousand dollars plus for that, yeah. that unit. Um, oh my god, now that particular yeah. unit has to be able to go out 40 to 50 times a year. If you can't get that unit out making 1500 to two thousand dollars that many times a year. That unit is not is not going to make sense in anyone's business model. You can't buy well, that 5%, unit. Yeah, five percent of of twenty grand is a grand. Mm -hmm. So that's that's right there. You got to get a grand per gig on a five percent rental charge, which is very reasonable, by the way. Very reasonable. Some people say no, but it, it it's a real world number. Mm -hmm. Five percent. Is incredibly reasonable to rent your equipment out to a customer, so you got to get a grand just to just to have this thing well, at every gig, and, and then you got a profit on top of that. And and that's based on that 20, 20 times out per year, which is a, a number that we use in most situations. But you, a person's got to be realistic in this situation. If you're buying that level, you've got to you're going to have to work your butt off, and and that's not the word I was going to use. You you've got to work your butt off because you're going to have to have this out. You've got to have this out more than 20. You're going to be 40 or 50 times in the course of a season. If you can't do that, mm -hmm. this is not the, the, the unit and the business model that you can use in your market. Well, the other thing you have to take into consideration, you talk about that 5%, and a lot of people are saying, well, I don't have to charge 5% because I'm out 60 times a year with my photo booth. Yep. So it's a much smaller percentage. And I get that. Even yep. if it's 1%. Even if it's 1%, okay? If you charge 1% on a $20,000 photo booth, um, yeah, you, you got to work 100 times. Your booth has to go out 100 times to get paid for. Yeah. Show me a photo booth that you can take out 100 times without any mechanical failures that you have to reinvest in your equipment. Very true. Very Hell, true. Show, me, show me a photo booth you can go out 20 times with. Where you don't have an equipment failure because mm -hmm. this shit is not built for the road. <laughs> not We're retrofitting all this stuff for the TJ, right? No, for sure. And that—that's the part so that I just—I just your printer's can't. getting banged around. Mm -hmm. That sixty-five inch you have monitor tenant, inside. Let's, let's, yeah, you're paying your tenant one hundred and fifty bucks, and and quite frankly, I think they're a fool to work for one hundred and fifty bucks on a Saturday. But if you can manage to get somebody for one hundred and fifty bucks to be your photo booth attendant. And be reliable. Are they going to give a hoot? Did I use a nice word there? Yeah, you did. That was. I didn't say the S word. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. They 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 don't give a flying hoot about your printer. So they might throw that around a little bit. I had heard somebody tell me that the big thing at the show were printer bags. Think about that for a minute. Soft shell printer bags. People are using these things. Can you imagine somebody chucking this into a vehicle? This is a printer. Yeah. And these are not inexpensive. These are like a thousand bucks or better. And and again, if you have a failure on this thing on yeah. a Saturday, you're dead. You're literally you dead. You have a backup printer. Or you got to do what I did. And even at that, that's even more equipment costs that you have to incur. If you guarantee that you have backup equipment there, you don't have a thousand dollars in printers anymore. You got two thousand dollars worth of printers, mm -hmm. so you just doubled it. I, 
I mean, I'm interested. I, I'm I'm genuinely interested just just because of the money part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, and, and the reason I say that is because yeah, yeah. I, I think when I looked at that PhotoMaster booth, and again, we're not picking on PhotoMaster as a they are a one of the the highest rated companies. People who do business with them love their gear, love their service, love their software. Sounds like a great product. They and it is. It's, yeah. They make some really cool, innovative things. We're just utilizing or mentioning them because they do have some of the higher end gear. That's why we're using this. I think that the PhotoMaster, when I was watching people, you'd have the DJs walk by and say, whoa, that's pretty cool. And they would continue walking by. They were headed somewhere else. You had the photo booth operators that have a legit company. And they're doing things, I think, similar to how DJs do that have multi-system situations where they're going to, they know that they're going to be running and they're going to be doing eight shows a weekend. They have some high-end high, high -end gear mm -hmm. and, and different things. And then they've got their, their, their cheaper basic stuff that goes out. But they're cash flowing and yeah. they know that the lesser expensive stuff is going to go out, which is going to help them so they can have that really cool uplighting system, which doesn't go out every weekend. But as a company, mm -hmm. they're cash flowing. I think that's what's happening is that you're having these photo booth companies that say, oh, we have option A, which is this, this printable selfie booth type thing with a webcam. Option B is this little, mm -hmm. little podium that has this. And option C, which is incredible, is this tall mirror of uh, 65-inch screen, da, 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 where people can say, oh, well, okay. The Dodge Viper. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're just now we're looking at okay. So now we have a seven hundred dollar version, we have a twelve hundred dollar version, and we have a twenty five hundred dollar version. And this one, I can put my name in lights, and I can make a blink, and it will uh, you know kiss me when I'm done, type of thing, whatever. But I think they're the people yeah. who are buying that. I really didn't see much interest from DJs beyond it was saying it was cool. They were looking at different things that could fit into their business plan. I think for a photo booth business plan, you could probably create something. So. When people are saying, oh, you can make money with photo booths. Yes, you can. But I don't think that not everyone can make money with every photo booth. I think in a situation like that, yeah. you and I would never be able to, uh, to justify that $20,000 investment. It's just the way it is. Right. No, I mean, I can see, like, if you were able to build a photo booth, well, like, like Drax had just said, and I, I didn't get any details on what he was talking about. But he said you could get into this for as little as twenty five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, and, and I've heard numbers, uh, fifteen hundred dollars, even a thousand dollars that people are doing for maybe selfie booths or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you could combine that with your DJ services, and um, it's like anything else, you know, get your oil change and get a free car wash. Mm -hmm. You're not getting a free car wash. You're paying for the car wash with the oil change. You just don't know it. They jack the car wash, the oil change up, up a little yeah. bit. And yeah, so I, I guess I'm kind of seeing it like that. Maybe that would be one way you could do it, but you'd have to be in that booth. Very good. And uh, maybe it's a non-media booth. Maybe it's just one of those silly ones that you text a picture to yourself or something, or I don't know. And that that certainly is know. that is a very popular, <laughs> a very popular thing. And it was. We we talked about iPad <laughs> the iPad booths, which are basically you take the picture and then you can add props now and then you can send that to yourself. And every every company pretty much has a version of that uh, stand. Whether uh, you know the ones I've got, I've got uh, Atlantic Photo Booth that, with my iPad ones. I went that way because that horror story you talked about with the printer. I've had enough experience with that where I'm done with printing. I have no interest in that. Someone else can yeah. offer that. The interesting with the iPad though is that. That the front camera is just a, like a FaceTime camera. It's not that great of quality. So now you've got Surface Pros that are becoming that, in essence, iPad that are running a webcam and they're getting much better quality. Still doing the same yeah. concept without the media and different things. But in either of these cases, you know, that $2,000, you're into a nice looking unit that you can use. And now let's take that $2,000. There's no media. You've got a, you know, setup. Maybe you've got a half an hour of setup and tear down. Um, you know, you're not talking the huge numbers. And now we go back to your 20, you know, your 5% rental. And we can work that into a business plan, I think, more realistically as a DJ than we can with a $20,000 booth. You know, my experience in my market, and you know where I live, I'm in Milwaukee, and, and our experience has been that what the client wants are not only prints, but unlimited prints. Mm. And they don't want strips. They want postcards. Okay, the four by six. And yeah. they want a custom logo on it, and they want green screen with a custom background. 
and they don't want one image. They want multiple images, <laughs> and they want whoever's getting their picture taken to choose which image goes on the green screen. And they want to do it for people who are seven feet tall, and they want to do it for people who are four feet tall. And if you know anything about green screen, you have to light that shit right. And if you don't light it right, it's going to look a little distorted in places because it's going to cast shadows. Uh-huh. So, and they want it for four hundred dollars. And and if you say, uh, "I'm going to give you a break on this and do it for six fifty, it's a lot of work, but we'll do it." Oh, we don't want that now. We can find someone who can do it for less. Oh yeah, this is what I'm running into. Mm-hmm. The photo booth people who I who who I've been working. The anybody who's a photo booth customer who's come to me, they want something grand and they don't want to pay anything for it. They're not asking me for an inexpensive alternative to photo booth. They're asking me for the big enchilada, but at a nothing price mm-hmm. because somebody out there, either in my market or in Chicago, which is a huge market, is doing. Somebody I, I read in the group that someone in Chicago is doing a mirror booth for five hundred dollars, and right. and so people are like really upset because why? Because someone's stupid and they're just doing that. Maybe it's a you know I, and I always envision this trust fund kid who can't find anything else to do, <laughs> so they become like a photo booth operator or a DJ, and they hey mom look I'm doing something with my life. I know you paid for all the equipment and. I'm giving it away, but I'm doing, I'm doing something, something with my yeah. life. That's I what I always envision in my head with this stuff. I think it happens. <laughs> or just people who are just not thinking this through, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, they're yeah. not thinking it through. They've got a home ec loan to buy one of these mirror booths, and now they're freaking out because they can't make a profit on it in their market, and they're trying to sell the thing at a loss. Yeah. Just so they don't have to get a bigger loss later, you know? So, yeah, I, I'm still waiting for someone to show me a business plan, a real business plan on this, where it's something that kind of resembles a photo booth. I know, and, and, and the thing that bothers me with the selfie booths, I hate this race in the zero crap. I can't stand it. Trying to make, well, let's, let's make it less of a photo booth so it's, it's more economical. Mm-hmm. But then it's not a photo booth anymore. No. This is like a Spotify DJ. It's the same crap as far as I'm concerned. And, and the other thing is, John, I mean, and now I'm ranting and I, no, you're, you're smiling because you like this when I do this. <laughs> I see that grin on your face. You're enjoying this. I don't. Okay. I'm a DJ because I love being a DJ. All right. I love it. I love music. I love playing music for people. Um, and, and I've taken my knocks from this. I've taken uh, my lifestyle compromises with this. I've lived in my mother's basement as an adult. I've gotten separated from my daughter's mother. I've lost money. I've, I've had to borrow money from family just to keep, keep my lights on in this business. I've paid my dues and you're never done paying your dues as a DJ. You got to love this and hustle to do what we do for a living. I don't love photo booth like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not passionate about it for me to do photo booth. I've got to make a lot of money on it and I don't want to kill myself because if I'm only going to turn a profit of four grand after I kill myself after a year for this, why don't I just get a part-time job at McDonald's? Yeah. Cause I'll make more than that. Oh, for sure. Less stress. And then less stress. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm having a hard time with this, you know, and, and I was talking to Howie earlier and I said something and he laughed to me. This is a bouncy house. You know how people go out and they buy the bouncy houses? <laughs> yep. Like I'm a DJ and now I do bouncy houses. Yeah, I've been oh, I'm not a carny, dude. I'm a DJ. I don't want to do like duck shoots either. I, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I don't want to do chocolate fountains either. I'm not into weddings. I'm into being a DJ. And maybe that's just me. Maybe there are some people out there who are just into the wedding thing. They're they're they, they want to like sell wedding dresses too. Well, you go ahead, rent tuxedos, do whatever you got to do. But this is not me. I don't love it that much, mm-hmm. but, but I'm a capitalist. So if you can show me a profit where I can do it without killing myself, I'm in. And that offer is still on the table. I put it out there in the video and, and I said at the end of the video, look, if somebody can show me a profit from this, a reasonable profit from this, I'm a photo booth guy from now on, and I'll jump on board with this. Mm-hmm. 
and, and I'll go. I'm there. But quite frankly, John, I don't want to lead anybody over a cliff with this. Oh, for sure. And I, and I do think that there's a lot of that where people get excited. They go, they hear about Photo Booth Expo, they go to Photo Booth Expo, they buy something. And let's go to that mirror so person who in Chicago is selling it for 500. They buy this thing because they hear people are getting that kind of money and they bring it back. And then the realization comes that they're going to have to sell that to make it to make it pay for itself in the course of a year. They're going to have to sell yeah. that 50 times. Well, they're not able to sell it. So how do we how do we get people to buy it? We drop our price, and hopefully then we can do it. Well, as you drop your price, you drop yourself out of profitability, and it becomes this kind of this cycle that just the spiral that takes you down and basically out of the business. The yeah. interesting thing with that in our specific little small area is we have, we've had probably a dozen different companies that have come through and some are gone, some are, are still here doing it on the side, but you don't mm -hmm. have anyone who's doing this full time. Why? Right. Because they all came in and they had this big idea that we were going to be able to book this out every weekend and now we have a lot of companies that are doing 10 shows a year. And that's the photo booth industry. Not every market is going to be like that. Obviously there's more opportunity in larger markets than what we have here, but this is the reality of the situation is that and if you're getting the wrong gear and not getting enough opportunities with the wrong gear, you are hosed. There's no question right. about it. There's no way you can you can fix stupid, and that's literally what you're dealing with. In the right situation, when you find something that fits in, you have a chance. Now, the the part I want where I want to head to next with this is I've been hearing from people who have been on these different uh, Facebook groups and such talking about that times where they're getting a call and they have a bride who's like, hey, uh, your DJ sounds great. Do you all have a photo booth also? And I've right. had a half a dozen uh, people that I've seen here in the last couple of weeks that don't have a photo booth. And they're like, uh, I mean, Dan Knight mentioned that uh, that he'd prefer to uh, to have it outsourced or have someone else do it. Well, these are DJs who are like, I, I lost the gig because of Joe Schmo over there has a photo booth and the DJ. And they wanted to buy it all in one stop. They didn't want to write two checks out for the night. And Dan uh, Carpenter shared last night a similar situation where he was able to to uh, uh, get there and he was everyone was happy, but he couldn't do the photo booth thing. So he ended up going and buying one. Yeah. I, I wonder how much that is going to influence the, you know, the question or two and people are like, I got to go get one. And how many of those deci purchasing decisions are actually going to hurt more in the long run because we're more of a knee-jerk reaction than an actual business plan. And that's where I'm at. I mean, I am not, again, just, just to be clear, I mean, I'm not completely against this, but help me. Help me help somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is where people are going. Let's talk about real ways we can do well with this. If you've got, and I've talked to people, I've got a DJ company, and we make this much money, and we've done really well. And so we thought photo booth is the next big thing. It's like, well, what does it really cost to operate a DJ company? Um, I mean, we know that there's annual expenses, and, but 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 price per gig expenses are relatively lower than what you'll have for a photo booth. It can, yep, certainly can be. So so you, you know you're really going to you know need to sell that photo booth for more than your DJ services. A, because it costs at least the same, if not more than your DJ system, and B, because you're incurring more out-of-pocket expenses per event. Certainly. Now, yeah, you can get a monkey to run the thing. I get that. You don't need to have talent to run a photo booth. It's great if you do have talent, but I don't think it's required mm -hmm. to be a photo booth attendant. you got to be able to carry the stuff and set it up. It'd be nice if you could tech it out, but someone with that skill level, you probably can't get them for 150 bucks a night. So... You know, and then I don't want to get stuck on the damn thing. I mean, believe me, I've done it. Yeah, I bought it for my daughter, booked these events for her. Hey, I got great news! I booked you an event. It's all this money you can pocket. Mm -hmm. hey, I got a thing that no. Yeah, like my my friends are having. Oh, a... I gotta go out and run this booth, and I can't do it by myself. I gotta bring Blanc, and Blanc is like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, like it's too bad. We're stuck. We have to go out and do it. On the plus side, if everything works that night, it's very stress-free because it doesn't matter. I mean, I play the wrong song, people get pissed off. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are they mad because they didn't get their picture taken? It's right here. Get your picture taken. Yeah. So there's nothing to be mad about. You know, if the photo booth isn't a big hit, I'm not in trouble. It's not my fault they didn't come to the photo booth. So, so the pressure's off. 
that's cool. Um, and I did enjoy that initially when, when we got it, but yeah, I don't know. I, I want to know more. I, I really do. And, and I'm, I just, nobody's helping me. Yeah. yeah nobody's I, giving me your suggestions, ideas. Well, you, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that, but not a real business plan where they show me numbers with everything, mm -hmm. including the assistant. You got to run this damn thing. You know, that's a cost. And I think I think why we're not seeing numbers is because that nobody's numbers are as good as they they say they are. Oh, no, believe me. And and yeah. for those of you who are are thinking that you know you look in your own numbers and how you reflect your numbers are probably two different things. Maybe not that far off. Where some people are very far off. It's a, it was an interesting thing um, talking to a a person who puts on conferences, national conferences, the big a big conference in the wedding industry, and they're basically saying that you know. Most of the speakers that are speaking on our stage are full of crap because they aren't selling as many things as they're selling and they their business no. isn't as good, but their information is good of what they're saying, but it's just not they're not selling a hundred thousand dollars worth of training a year or doing all this. They're not real with the specifically wedding industry. It's not just us. It's every everybody likes to make themselves sound much better than they are. No one wants to get up there and say, you know, God, I can't sell worth a crap. I I don't have you know, I, I've got my gear here and this here, and I'm like this close to bankruptcy because I just can't figure out how to get this stuff out there into the field. You know, the only people who tell you that are the people who've already gotten out of it. Then they'll admit it. <laughs> they'll admit that. They'll say, I'm so happy I sold that goddamn thing. Yeah. I mean, I lost five grand on it, but I don't care. I'm so happy it's gone. Um, the other people who, who were really honest about it are the people who reach out to me privately. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll say, ah, B, I got to talk. I yeah. hear this is what I did. This is what I'm trying to do. This is how it's working out. Oh, ah. You know, and I'll talk to them. I try to take them off the ledge, you know. Mm -hmm. like, well, don't panic. Maybe there's something you can do here. Just don't panic. But yeah, no one's going to go in public and say, "Yeah, I messed up." Mm -hmm. No one's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one wants yeah. to admit, or, or I, I don't want to say not take responsibility for their action, but sometimes taking responsibility for it and then to publicly take ownership of of it are two completely different things. You know. Well, it's like it's like Ford versus Chevy, right? People tend to defend their per, their purchases, mm, regardless. The of only people, accident. yeah, like like it, let, let's say that you drive a Chevy truck, right? You're not going to say it's a piece of crap until you trade it in for the Ford. Mm -hmm. and, and then you're going to say, oh, my God, I'm so glad I got rid of that piece of junk Chevy. My Ford is awesome now. And your Ford's going to be awesome until you trade it for that Dodge that you like better. And then you're going to say, oh, my God, that Ford was a nightmare. I'm so glad I got my Dodge. Yeah. But the whole time that you own that thing, you're going to defend it. Tooth and, it's, and nail. Oh, yeah. Yes. It, it's weird, man. It's so weird. So oh, where does that where does that leave us? Um, I, help I, th me. I think help me. Don, I don't, help don't, me understand this. I still don't, don't get I, it. I don't think there's any any easy answer. I think there's a few things that people have to keep in mind. And one I think is opportunities within your market, the area in which you serve. It's the people that I'm talking to where they're like, if I buy it and then I'm going to be able to pick up gigs within two hours of my house and I'll be doing all this. One of the and I had that discussion with someone is like, oh, do you do events two hours? No, right now I'm pretty much doing them in my own town and a couple of others. It's like, well, so now you're going to buy this with the idea that you need to expand your area and you haven't been in that area. You don't have any marketing in that area. You don't have any contacts in that area. Does this being real with yourself and looking at what is the potential for whatever that service is? I think is a big part of it. Being real and understanding that I, no matter how good of a salesman I am, I can't sell this $20,000 photo booth in a in an area that doesn't have right. that it doesn't work being right. being real to understand and this is the part that that um, is a little tough is that sometimes it's easier to package this up and sell that that photo booth as part of the package than it is to sell DJ or the other and in some markets right. that's a very very hot ticket which is interesting yeah. the DJ can charge 750 for their show and the photo booth uh, at one time could get a thousand, but you know what? They can now put it as a fifteen hundred dollar combination or something to that effect, and they're able to get a decent rate. And on a selfie booth, which the number of DJs I talked to last week that are doing a selfie booth is just—I mean, that's that's like the go-to thing. I heard fewer DJs who are printing 
than are doing some sort of a social media booth. And obviously uh, that's, that's something good. maybe I wouldn't mind doing. I mean, maybe I'll look into that. And that, uh, that's, that and seems to be, I can, I can do a $1,800 thing where I do that. But even at that, I've got to find a warm body to run this thing or at least be there probably to yeah. like make sure things don't get destroyed while I'm DJing. Uh, um, Heps, Heps mentions the more the more prints uh, talking ta going with the print, and I get that, and that, and I've had that situation a little bit when I had some of the prints out that people would be like, "Hey, I got a picture, and it's on my refrigerator," and they called. I've had more the, the last few times that I did do the printing. I had more people leaving them on the table. I mean, I I went from the one uh, specific prom that they had to be printing. The the advisor insisted on that. I picked up like a hundred strips from around um, the room. You know, and, I've had really good success with that. I figured out this thing. I mean, just going out and doing it like we did. We did mm -hmm. a lot of photo booth events. Mm -hmm. And I never had that problem. Really never had the problem. And the reason I didn't was because I was stingy with my media kits from the go. Uh, I was like, when we first started doing it, I was selling it. I think I, think I, I let it out for 600 if there were only two prints per session. So one print went into the scrapbook, the other print went to whoever got the picture taken, and they'd have to share it. And then when I went to unlimited prints, the way I did it was, after the photo session, I would look at whoever was in the group picture and say, who would like a print? Mm -hmm. If they didn't ask for one, I didn't print one. So I made it kind of a coveted thing. Um, and you know what I mean. If, if there's a... If there's a thousand sixty-eight chargers out there, uh, you know, or a or, or hundred thousand sixty-eight chargers out there for sale in town, they're not worth that much. Right. But if there's three, wow, I got to have that car. The value goes up. They become more coveted, and people aren't just, you know, I don't know, painting peace signs on the side of them. I mean, it's a classic vehicle that you want to take care of. I tried to make them a very coveted item at these, like a swag item. Sure. Like swag. Yeah. Yep. But it was an unlimited swag. You had to ask for it. Mm -hmm. I get, I get and, that. And and we did very well that in that regard. So so, yeah, that that was a win. I mean, I, we figured that out. We figured out the flow too, which was nice because what was happening, uh, I, I was noticing is that it's kind of like a production line because you got to pick out your stuff. Yep. And then you've got to get your session done, and then you've got to get you wait, you know, for your photo strip. Well, our printer got faster, but. Still, there's a bit of a wait. There is. Um, yeah. We had that thing as an assembly line, and we did a lot of sessions, and people liked that because they got a lot of pictures on their media drive that we gave them. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I remember. Shortly after we got our photo booth, the big thing became, what do you call it? Like when you send the picture to somebody's email or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What what the social it? media booth, yeah, that's what the social media booths do where they're sending it Social off. media booth, there you yeah. go. We, we looked into that and I'm thinking to myself, our assembly line is running so smooth. Do I really need a drunk punch in their email on this <laughs> shit? Because I'm going to back it up and I'm going to have less sessions per event. And my clients aren't going to like that. So what I'm going to be able to do is, say, yeah, you know, we could do it. But if you want more sessions, that really backs things up. Can you imagine your grandmother typing in her email? <laughs> yeah. What's my, my mom's cell phone years number old, again? She's cool, but yeah. No, it's just going to back. And I'm drunk. I can't see uh, more people messing with your stuff. I'd rather not do that. Here's the picture. Don't touch anything. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, I got to look into this. We have the photo booth. It's it's sitting 10 feet away from me right now. Uh, Jeannie, our oldest daughter, is expecting in June. And so she's having a baby shower. And Stevie, our youngest daughter, is helping plan that baby shower. Okay. Now, Jeannie has said, hey, Stevie, bring your photo booth. And Stevie said, go pound sand. I'm not bringing my photo booth. <laughs> I'm going to put a selfie booth together because that thing's a pain in the ass. Okay. It's to that point where she doesn't even want to mess with it. That's funny. So she went on Amazon and she ordered some things uh, to do a selfie booth. Okay. I, I don't completely understand what she's doing, but the signs are cute and I'm sure it'll work fine. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't want to get a bouncy house either, man. I think Show me the money and I'm on board. I think you should get a bouncy, bouncy house. Okay. Yep. We are going to wrap this little part of our session and we are going to uh, head to our next topic here. So uh, we'll be right back here in about 30 seconds. Good evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJ and TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional. Promo only, and the DJ and TV insiders. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Okay, there we go. It took a little while. There's that one last video is a little big video, so it doesn't go quickly. So we are back. Video. We are yeah. back. And some of you might have seen a little uh, video clip in that little exchange that was something new that you'll be hearing more of coming up here. And I, I haven't even talked to Brian about this too much, a little bit maybe. I'm always the last to know. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, Brian's going to be the one heading up that department of our... our... <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> okay. he doesn't need to know for another two weeks. I guess that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so for the uh, the last part of our, our time together tonight, we're going to talk, uh, as a lot of you have heard, watch, what have you, um, there was a HBO dropped, I think it was Sunday night, so two days ago? Sunday and Monday. Sunday and Monday. They part. dropped um, after, it was after Neverland. No, leaving Neverland. Leave, leaving Neverland. Okay, can was, give it, I have not two? watched it. I've just been reading, reading some of the the things about it. So give us kind of a little a little uh, quick synopsis and and let's kind of dig into why it's become such a big thing in the DJ community. Well, it's a two part documentary called ne Leaving Neverland. Uh, they aired part one on Sunday, part two on Monday, and then the bonus was something called After Neverland, which was an Oprah Winfrey interview with the people who or the gentleman who directed. Um, Leaving Neverland and and the two gentlemen who were the subjects of Leaving Neverland. Okay. And um, what it is is the guys who were testifying for Michael Jackson uh, in his trials are coming out now. I think the first one came out in like 2013 that, yeah, there was indeed sexual abuse and, and, and child molestation going on with Michael Jackson. And uh, this is their story. Mm -hmm. It's not, and, and that's where I think people are getting confused. Jackson estate is just, just very angry about this. Very much so. And, uh, the, the Oprah Winfrey asked, the, and I thought it was a really good question. Uh, she asked the director, why did you reach out to the Jackson family uh, for this documentary? Why, why did you make this, such a, a one-sided story. And he said, well, this was not Michael Jackson's story. This was their story. And what they had gone through, what good would it have done to go to the family who's just going to defend him? This is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to at least listen to, you know, let these survivors be heard. I don't have to believe them, but we need to listen to them. And this was their story, not Michael Jackson's story. So that made sense, I guess. Sure. But yeah, it's just like R. Kelly. I mean, the stuff pops up and um, all of a sudden, uh, whether or not someone's been convicted or something or they've been cleared of something in the court of law, I think that as DJs, we should probably be concerned with the court of public opinion. There, sir. That's exactly where I wanted to go with this. Because that, I think, in this day and age is is more going to be more detrimental to our side of things is that that court of public opinion where by playing something and playing the wrong thing and even unbeknownst to us playing the wrong thing could have some major repercussions on what we do 
Yeah. Well, I did a video on this yesterday, and I tried to do it in the same spirit as I did the R. Kelly video. And in neither one of those videos did I say how I felt personally about Michael Jackson or his music or the allegations or the alleged uh, accusers, if you will. I didn't say any of that. All I said was, what do you do? I mean, it's it, regardless of how I feel about it, what's going on here, whether I think he's completely innocent or whether I think he's a horrible human being, it's not the me show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, 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 it's not me singing at home, listening to the music. It's me performing the music at, at public and private events. How do I handle this? Yeah. Because some people have opinions on it. Very, very strong opinions. I did the math on it, John. Uh, Oprah Winfrey mentioned this, and and uh, some people like her, some people don't. Again, I'm not voicing of my opinion on Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. She just put a statistic out there, and and I don't have any reason to believe that she made it up. The statistic is that one out of six men have been sexually molested as children. So I thought about that. I'm like, okay, one out of six men. So if I do an event, of 150 people at say a wedding reception mm -hmm. it's it's fair to to assume that half of those people at that event are going to be men it's just average half so yeah. 75 people if i divide 75 by six then i get 12.5 men at every event that statistically speaking have been sexually molested as children yeah whether they've come out about it or not whether they've said anything about it or not and i'm playing a michael jackson song today after this is aired now not new news we've known about this stuff for years we've heard about it for years mm -hmm. but this is fresh it's just like the r kelly thing it's fresh um i googled leaving neverland after i put my video up mm -hmm just to see what would pop up, you know, in Google and CNN, whether you like CNN or not, one of their, uh, stories popped up. So I clicked on it and the guy who wrote the story said, Sunday, I went into a Starbucks. I heard beat it over the system and I got sick to my stomach because I just saw leaving Neverland. It's the first line of that story. Yeah. Uh, this is an indication that maybe people are feeling a little funny about this. Mm -hmm. Some are going to be cool with it. And, and, and again, man, you could go out there and, and you could say, he's a horrible person. I'm never going to play his songs. You could go out there and say, hey, I don't believe any of this crap. Oprah Winfrey is, is evil. And uh, Michael Jackson was a saint. So I'm going to play it all the time. Well, hold on a minute. It ain't about you or what you think. It's it's about our clients, and it's about our guests. So I don't know what the right answer is here, but it's an issue. Mm -hmm. Even if the client says it's cool, at a 150-person wedding event, like I said before, I have, I'm risking <sighs> traumatizing 12, hey. at least 12.5 men in the audience. Yeah, a percentage. And their families, and their mothers, and their wives, mm -hmm. and anybody else who knows about it, anybody else who just has an opinion on it. So I'm sure the percentage is higher than 12.5 men, or the, the number of men yeah, there, yeah. or the number of people they're upset about this. I don't know how to handle this. Yeah. Other people say, well, you know, if we do this for Michael Jackson, we got to do it for R. Kelly, then we got to do it for Jerry Lee Lewis, then we got to do it for Elvis Presley, and we got to do it for everybody in rock and roll. Hold on a minute. We didn't just see a documentary about Jerry Lee Lewis. We just saw a documentary about R. Kelly at the beginning of the year, and we just saw one about Michael Jackson, and people have very strong opinions about this right now. So how do we handle it? we, we got to take it from that point, not anything at that point, and go. And I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to err on the side of caution, John. I would, I would agree completely with you is that I think in this day and age, with the way we are ultra-sensitive to anything and everything, 
that we have to err on this side of caution. And uh, it was interesting. You mentioned that uh, that that percentage that, uh, that that you're referring to there that Oprah had shared. I was following another article that was talking about that percentage that uh, was used, and they were defining kind of what is is considered uh, a sexual um, uh, the sexual assault and such in there. Uh-huh. And they're going, they're going through, and they're talking about, you know, that having an adult figure even, you know, showing pornography to to kids because they were referring to the bed where he had the different uh, pornography things and there were fingerprints of a whatever, whatever. And it's like, goodness gracious, you start looking at at all the different things, and that twelve people, twelve guys in the room could be a lot higher than that. It could be, and, and they, they it, were, yeah, they, they were saying actually in the documentary that that one of the questions that in the past has always been asked was, was there penetration? It's like, it, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And it, that's not what it's all about. You know, it's, it's all the other stuff that leads up to that too. It's, it's not just that. Um, I don't know, man. And, and again, I mean, I could talk about how I personally feel about it, how I broke it down. Uh, but, but uh, who cares? I mean, I, I could do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and we could talk about that, but bottom line is what we need to worry about as entertainers is how to handle this. Mm-hmm. Now, now Jimmy says, um, but do they tie MJ's music with their trauma? The answer to that question is, I don't know. And I don't think it. I don't think it. It matters to a point because we have to watch out for that one person, or two yeah. people, or five people who's going to where I, that we're going to to visibly affect them to the point where either we're going to ruin their night, they're going to go off and, fl- and fly off the handle and ruin the nights for other people, whatever that situation is. I think as a, a performer in, in front of a crowd, I think R. Kelly and, you know, R. Kelly never made my playlist anyway, really that much. So well, that's no, not, not a lot. lot. It wasn't but requested. Michael Jackson, I, was, I pretty much, there's something being dropped every show. And that's, that's going to go off my radar for a period of time, whether it's six months, whether it's six years, Right. It's got to go. Low. It's got to go. <laughs> lay low. Literally, I don't, literally you know. we have to lay low. Now that doesn't mean that when I'm listening to to uh, things at the house here in the office and a Michael Jackson song, I'm not going to be like, "Oh my God, that's that." I I'm not going to most likely pick out that uh, that that you know. As soon as I hear the song, I'm going to be thinking about a, a child monster. It'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I like that song from Michael Jackson," and then I continue on with what I'm doing. So in my personal life is one thing but when it comes to being in front of a, p- a crowd of people yeah. at a wedding yeah it's going to be completely off the list unless the bride and i would almost go as far as if the bride and groom wanted the song i would i would process i would talk to them about it to make sure they were understanding w- what the potential problems could be and i would maybe go all to the point of saying hey i've got this uh, a favorite michael jackson song for our, for the couple. going out to the bride because she really wanted to hear it no yeah matter. exactly and i tried to talk her out of it but she wanted to hear it yeah exactly and yeah. you guys go watch hbo and you'll see why i'm upset but <laughs> you've got to you really have to do that because you don't want to have a situation where it's let's go to that wedding that the bride wants to hear the song. You played the song, and the guests are like, "Oh my God!" The DJ played this this, sex, this, this sexual abuser, child abuser, playing his music, and poor poor Sonia, her her wedding's gonna be ruined because he played this song. And oh, look at she's putting on a brave face and dancing, but I'm sure it's ruining her day because you know he's a sex he's child abuser and such, the sexual predator. I, so I, I, again, I, proactive by not, and then I, you I, yeah. I don't have the answers. It's I, I see a lot of folks out there, and, and, and people that I know, for a fact, are conservative politically, who are very against not playing Michael Jackson. They want to play it and screw everybody. It's their attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a very strong opinion on it, and their opinion matters more than anyone else's uh, feelings could possibly matter. I, on the other hand, I'm a little more empathetic than that. I mean, I can kind of or maybe sympathetic than that. I I can see how maybe this might bother somebody. Yeah. Okay. As a human being, as a freaking consumer, I don't think I'm going to go out and buy anything Michael Jackson right now. Yeah. Because, because uh, it can, you know, it's, or R. Kelly for that matter. If it happens to come on the radio or whatever, I'm not going to freak out. Um, it's too deep into my lexicon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's normal. The song is normal. I mean, you know, Harvey Weinstein. 
right? Well, he's been accused of some pretty horrible things. Yeah, yeah. And I was watching a film a while back. A romantic comedy came on. And the credits were rolling at the beginning. And then right before it started, right at the below, produced by Harvey Weinstein. I thought, oh, my God, you know. Mm. But this was not just a Harvey Weinstein thing. There are actors and actresses in there who are part of this who did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I didn't turn that off. (laughs) Although he bothers me. If he hadn't produced the film, somebody else would have. I don't know that there would have been much of a difference as to who was in it. Mm, Probably. Yeah, probably not. What their performances were. So it wasn't all about Harvey Weinstein. Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5. I mean, you got four other Jacksons. Right, but with Michael Jackson, you got Michael, Michael Jackson. You got the yeah, just the one that. With R. Kelly, you got R. It's not R. Kelly in the Furious Six. It's R. Kelly, <laughs> or whatever you know. Six, like it's that. the dude. Yeah. Um, so I I don't know, man. I don't know, and and I have voiced you know kind of how I've broken it down with with the whole thing. I think I get it. I think. I can step back and and look at the situation as as just a citizen and kind of form my own opinions on what I feel like most likely probably happened here mm-hmm. uh, with with reasonable confidence that I I think I'm right. But again, it doesn't matter. Not 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 in our not in our job. It doesn't matter. It, what matters is how other people feel. Other people feel about it, whether we agree with them or not, or whether we think they should feel a different way or not, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody oh. mentioned uh, Gary Gary Glitter um, mm-hmm. with with rock and roll. Yeah, I I know stadiums around here stopped playing it, uh, and I I can't I haven't been to a game, and not that I go to a lot of games, but the last dozen games I've gone to, there hasn't rock and roll part two is no longer part of the um, the repertoire at least what I've heard. Do you know Andy Crampton? Have you yeah. heard of him? Yeah. yeah. Andy and I were, were outside of uh, BPM one year in uh, Birmingham, England. Mm-hmm. And a guy walked past us and he goes, oh my God, that's Gary Glitter. What is he doing here? And he just walked right past us and I looked at curly hair, kind of an old guy, you know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you mean the rock and roll guy? He's like, yeah. Um, and he told me about what had happened with... Um, all of the allegations with him and how he'd been in prison and all this stuff. And of course he's in prison for life now. It sounds like, um, but come to find out Gary glitter was not a one hit wonder over there. Gary glitter had a long career as a glam rock superstar. He didn't just have rock and roll part two or whatever the hell we ended up with. Mm -hmm. There were several Gary glitter songs. Um, so a little more of a big deal about, not playing his songs, the songs that were staple, there were staple songs that were Gary Glitter songs. They played at events and it was not rock and roll part two. It was something I'd never heard of hmm. uh, that we'd never gotten. Yeah. Well, which... but, yeah. Yeah. Go figure. I mean, how can the, you know, you don't have one hit and become a star forever. Um, you, you have multiple hits and sell many albums and then you can go ahead and call yourself a rock star. You know, Madness had more hits than our house. They had a slew of hits. Before and after our house that we never heard over here. So, I mean, that, that's just kind of how that ball rolls. So, Gary Glitter was a big deal over there. Here, it was Rock and Roll Part 2, and that happened in, what, 1972, 1973? Yeah, somewhere, early 70s, yeah. And, and we're not really thinking about it much anymore, unless they play it at the dumb sporting event that I don't even go to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Oh, I don't okay. know, man. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't have the answer. You're, you've got a lot of questions answer. tonight. Well, we should be thankful for. I, I think it, I, I'm thankful that I don't pretend to have the answers. There is. I mean, it gives a it gives us a good discussion, and we can look at things from different angles and confuse everyone who's watching. This is how it is. Yeah. There are people out there like that. I'm not that dude. I'm yeah. telling you, I don't know. We don't. I don't know what to do about photo booth. I don't know what to do about R. Kelly, and I don't know what to do about Michael Jackson. I don't know what to do about Blanca. All right. <laughs> So how the hell am I going to know how to <laughs> do all this other crap? 
Oh, so next next week, gang, we are going to be in Las Vegas with Mobile Beat Las Vegas 2019. Um, yes. We're going to come... We're going to be doing some live broadcasting from Mobile Beat. We're not exactly sure times or locations beyond Monday. The only one I know for surely right now is Monday at noon Vegas time. We're going to be going live from right outside the exhibit, kind of the exhibit hall and the the main a seminar preview. room. A little preview before Mike Walter takes the stage at one o'clock. And this is this is uh, Las Vegas time, Pacific time, so noon Pacific. Next Monday, we're, we'll be going live for about an hour. We're going to be grabbing people and and talking there. In the evening, uh, there's a ch- we, we right now we've, we're still up in the air with what ha- is going on with the room situation. We were uh, we were planning a suite, the DJ and TV suite, but I don't have confirmation that that's going to be available for us on on the evening. So uh, you're gonna have to watch the the uh, Facebook page go. My personal Facebook page, I'll be putting a lot of the information out there at uh, Facebook.com/slash John Young MN. Can I interject for just a moment? Yeah. Go back on my YouTube channel and type in Tamale Party. All right? Just just do it. Yeah. The coolest video I've ever shot at Mobile Beat was in a little bitty room. Two years so ago? Carl's room. Two or three years Two ago. Two or three years ago. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the a- last Riviera show. Yep. Yeah. It was the last Riviera show. That was one of the coolest videos I've ever shot. People came around that I never expected to come around. We had people from all over the world in there. We did. That was crazy. Um, and we're laughing and cutting up and having a great time. I put the camera and I like sat it on top of the TV and we just kept talking and people kept coming to the camera. It's just like doing any other kind of event. If you do a, a, a 75 person party in a room made for 500, it's going to seem kind of sparse. But if you cram 30 people into a room made for four, you have some fun. <laughs> You've got something. Uh, it was great. It was, Go back it, and look at it. I was I there, yeah. I, I popped in for a little bit of time, and it was trying to fight the way in there. And then, of course, uh, uh, Morrow had his tamales out, and you, know, yeah. you, could, you could grab and, and do what you wanted. But, yeah, it was it – was, that was <laughs> – that was well. Excuse me, I want to walk over there. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, it was one of those nights. Yeah, um, that was a good year. Was that fun. was a good year. It was fine. So, so yeah, that went like eight grand. So I was happy. Oh, that's a great year. A really good that's year. A great year. Yeah. So that so, maybe helped. So we'll we'll see what next week uh, what what we're going to be able to put together, and we'll keep you guys up to date on that, and kind of let everyone know. And we'll be again in Las Vegas. And if you are going to be there, hey, find us in the hallway and and say hi, because we'd love to meet as many of you as we possibly can at the show. This is kind of one of that that kind of cool time to actually put faces and names. And and if you come up, please mention your 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 YouTube or your Facebook uh, handle if it's not your real name. (laughs) Right, <laughs> that please. helps tremendously. Say, I'm hey, paying night DJs. Oh, now I know who you are. Yeah, exactly, John. I, I, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, this, this I, have th- I have three words for anybody who's going to Vegas and wants to come and say hi to me. I have three words for you: Venti, Mocha, Frappuccino. <laughs> All right. Those those are the three Venti. words I want you to remember. So if if you if you really want to get my attention. Those are the three words you need to remember. And of course, there is a Starbucks right down the hall. It's there. It's just a long walk for a cripple like me. And if somebody were to bring me one, yeah, I'd probably have some time to talk to them. <laughs> there you go. A little, little, little bribery doesn't hurt. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. We'll be, again, coming back to you next week live from Las Vegas. Good night, everybody.